Okay, here we are on Unit 17, quite a short um, unit again, Real Estate Investments and Business Opportunity Brokerages. Uh, just get to know the uh, terminology, these key terms. We'll go through these just now. So when we're talking about real estate investments, we're just talking about the normal categories of real estate, that is residential, which is usually single family or multifamily rentals and sales um, up to uh, four units, commercial, retail and office properties, and industrial, which is manufacturing, distribution, warehouses, and that sort of thing. Don't forget agriculture, any types of agricultural property, usually regarded as more than 10 acres, and also business opportunities where you're actually selling businesses as well as real property. There's just a quick... Um, pictorial of the different types of properties that an investor may uh, become interested in and your job as a real estate agent is to actually determine which would best suit that investor's needs and where the most value of return can come from. If we look at real estate investments, we look at the advantages. We can see that uh, the rate of return on real estate as an investment is usually good. It does have tax advantages. A hedge against inflation. We can see here, according to the Feds, that uh, house prices uh, went up and down like this, but uh, uh, they were always ahead of inflation, which was the red line. And also... Um, not so good as gold, though. Rather, gold is uh, hasn't done so well over the last years, whereas real estate is still ahead of gold if you bought some, say, in 1975. Disadvantage, illiquidity. Uh, it has uh, uh, poor liquidity. It's hard to change real estate into cash. The market is local in nature. Need for expert help when getting into investment property, and once you've bought it, you probably need some help to act actively manage it. And of course, there are different types of risk involved. The first risk we have is the business risk. Will the income be sufficient to pay the expenses of running the business? Financial risk is the risk of defaulting on any borrowed money payments. And purchasing power risk, which is the inflation risk. In other words, I may have a long-term fixed lease, but the inflation erodes away the value of the dollar, so I'm getting paid in less value dollars even though the uh, property um, itself stays the same and interest risk if I have an adjustable rate mortgage for instance the interest rates may go up so risks also affect return liquidity risks may not get the full price in a quick sale safety risk uh, the market risk for instance interest rates go up profits go down value goes down by the way we capitalize it and the risk of a default uh, the whole project may not make enough money to pay for itself what's the difference between a business brokerage and residential real estate brokerage well the similarities obviously are the sale of real property or assignment of a long lease and they all need uh, an active real estate license to deal with this but the difference is, is uh, between the business, for instance, you may be dealing with other assets other than real property, personal property, and also maybe goodwill, intangible assets, um, and also stocks and shares and inventory and so forth. And also we'll look at the going concern value. The going concern value uh, on the business is going to be more than an, operating, uh, uh, an operation that isn't actually operating at the moment. And also a wild geographic market. People who usually buy houses want to live in that market uh, market area, but of course you don't have to be living there um, and your, um, your uh, local investment opportunity may appeal to people living outside the market area. If we're dealing with um, investment properties such as corporations and so forth, we may be dealing with different types of corporate stocks, which may be part of the transfer. Just know that there are always common stock associated with a corporation and sometimes preferred stock. You need to know how to analyze these and put a value on them. And also management of working capital, know where the money is coming in, where it's going out and how to manage it. And also understanding and even possibly authoring a budget. 
When we talk also about business accounting, some of the pieces of paper we may come across, for instance, would be an income statement analysis. Income statement, like we have from the bank or from a credit card, shows what's happened over the last month or over a given period of time, whereas a balance sheet uh, is the analysis stated at the moment in time. It shows us what we have right now. And they may, the two of them may be joined together. Cash flow analysis. How much cash do we actually have left over after all the expenses are paid? How much the asset for tax purposes has depreciated, both the real and personal property? And taxation, how the investor can gain tax benefits or what the taxation liabilities are and send them off to someone who's better qualified at taxes than you are. We do the same valuation as we did for real property. We use a comparable sales analysis approach or the cost approach and the income approach or an income analysis. But we throw one extra in there, which is liquidation analysis. What sort of price, what sort of value has the building got if we were to quickly um, sell it when it's going out of business or at an auction or foreclosure? The steps are really similar to selling a regular real property. You list the business for sale, identify all the assets of the business and put a valuation on the business. Then we would deduct the liabilities, the money that we actually owe and any outstanding shares or stocks. We have to put a valuation of the stock. We make, must make sure that your business is operating and can in the future operate within legal compliance with the laws. There's not going to be an uh, uh, end of a grandfathering in period uh, with a change of ownership. Just as with the house, listing a house, we need to market the business. And then we need to find a buyer. But before the buyer gets too much information or any information, the buyer will sign a confidentiality and a non-disclosure agreement just so that the buyer has got an opportunity to go and look at all the secret recipes or formulas and the way the business operates. But of course, also look at the books without actually going away with that knowledge to enrich themselves. And then both parties will enter into a contract and then you would establish a due diligence period where the buyer can go through everything to make sure that the buyer is prepared to buy the, the investment. In the meantime, the attorneys or title companies will be preparing the uh, closing documents and you will schedule a closing date with all parties present and so forth. Not necessarily in that order. Okay, that's really all there is to this particular uh, chapter is very short. There's a few questions on it, I believe. So I'll talk to you on the next unit. Thank you.